You know the one pseudoscience phrase that pisses me off the most? Fat burning exercises. Like, what the fuck are fat burning exercises? A 10 minute fat burning workout. Awesome, total body fat burning. 12 stretches you can do at home. It burns fat quickly. Get rid of belly fat. Burn fat in five moves. People lose weight by being in a caloric deficit, which means they're taking in fewer calories than the calories that they're burning. Now, one pound of body fat equals 3,500 calories, which means that in order to lose one pound of body fat in a week, you need to cut 500 calories out of your diet over what you need to maintain your body mass. Now, obviously exercise, any exercise at all burns calories because you know, you're moving around, you're doing stuff, you're not just sitting there anymore. Even an exercise like this, Yeah, even an exercise like that technically counts as a fat burning exercise. Wait, hold up, where the, where the hell did these come from? Get these out of here. All right, yes, certain exercises will burn more calories than other exercises, like high intensity interval training is gonna burn a lot more calories than steady state cardio on a treadmill, okay? But you don't even have to do cardio, you don't even have to exercise at all to lose weight. Simply eating less every day is gonna be a lot easier. So for example, eating a Snickers bar, that's 215 calories. If you wanna burn that with exercise, that's gonna take about an hour worth of moderate weightlifting or about 20 minutes jogging on a treadmill. I also wanna throw in that you cannot target specific parts of your body to lose weight by doing specific exercises. Where your body stores your body fat, if it's in your waist or if it's in your hips, that is entirely determined by your genetics and by your hormones and it has nothing to do with your diet or your exercise, okay? Oh yeah, and before I continue, I suppose I should do some intro so you guys know what I'm talking about. Who is it gonna be? I don't know, it's a mystery, who is this? Paul Fadika here with my YouTube channel. Today I'm debunking seven fitness myths and I originally started with a list of like three or four but it just kept glowing. And these are common myths I hear all the time in the gym or on fitness message boards. So I wanna address each of them individually. And uh, I don't expect everyone to agree with me. They're probably down in the comments down below saying, oh, Paul Fadika, full of shit again, you know? But here we go, let's do this anyway. Myth number two is that recomping is impossible. Now what recomping is, is losing body fat and gaining muscle mass at the same time. Now up until a couple days ago, I thought that was impossible, but I did my research and I found some studies showing that it is in fact possible to do without steroids, without performance enhancing drugs, and without being a newbie lifter. Now normally bodybuilders will switch between a bulking phase and a cutting phase, where when they're bulking, they're gaining muscle mass, and when they're cutting, they're losing body fat. So when they're bulking, they're in a caloric surplus, and when they're cutting, they're in a caloric deficit. So recomping seems kind of impossible to do because you need to be in a caloric surplus and a caloric deficit at the same time, which which it seems impossible. I mean, on one hand, you need to cut 3,500 calories out to lose one pound of body fat, and you need to take in 2,800 calories to build one pound of lean muscle mass. So how is recomping even possible? In the study I found, the participants did exactly that. I'm gonna have all the links and every study I talk about, I'm gonna have a link in description down below, so check that. So the participants who followed this diet plan, they cut about 600 calories a day out of their diet in order to lose that body fat while exercising four times a week. All right, the guys in the study, they're natural athletes, they're not noobs at all. And what this study found is that while cutting, the optimal rate of cutting is 0.7% of your body mass per week. So if you're a 170 pound guy, you wanna try cutting 1.2 pounds of body fat out per week. That's the optimal rate to lose body fat and preserve your muscle mass. So the participants who cut at this rate managed to lose about 10 pounds of body fat in eight weeks while simultaneously gaining about three and a half pounds of lean muscle mass, which are some pretty impressive results showing that recomping is actually possible. I'm gonna try cutting like that in about a month or two. I'm gonna remove about 600 calories from my daily diet and I'm hoping I can get results similar to this study. All right, myth number three is that boosting testosterone equals boosting your gains. So in the study I was reading, they found that boosting anabolic hormones like uh, testosterone, HGH, and IGF-1 did not result in gaining lean muscle mass. So what that means is that for a guy who's 30 years old, the normal range for testosterone is about 300 to 600. So any fluctuations within that level will not have an impact 
on the amount of gains that you see. It isn't until you go past that normal range, you know, 10 or 20 percent beyond what's normal, that you start really seeing an increase in muscle growth. So going from 400 to 550 testosterone is not going to increase your potential for gaining muscle mass. On the other hand, it will help you lose or keep off body fat because the higher your testosterone is, even within normal ranges, will prevent your body from storing fat. Moving on to myth number four. Okay, this isn't really a myth. It's just something I wanted to really address and clarify. It's people's unrealistic expectations of the sort of gains that they can see. How much muscle can you realistically expect to gain in a year of working out and dieting? Now, the average sedentary guy his body weight is going to be about 33% muscle, which means that if he weighs 160 pounds, he's gonna be carrying around about 53 pounds of muscle mass. Now, if you wanna be competitive at a men's physique show, you're gonna need a muscle mass percentage of 44% or higher, which is really high up there, meaning he's going to need to gain about 32 pounds of muscle mass and probably cut some body fat in there too, but that's a different story. So the question is, how long does it take to do something like that? How long does it take to gain 32 pounds of muscle mass. How long does it take to go from stringy arm noodle boy over here to competition ready? Well, if he does it naturally, it's gonna take him two full years of working out to gain enough muscle mass. So if you're a noob lifter, in the first year, you can expect somewhere around 25 pounds of muscle mass gain. And that amount gets halved every additional year that you work out. So it goes from 25 down to 12, down to six, down to only three pounds of muscle mass gained in an entire year by the fourth year of working out. And that's because you're approaching your genetic potential and you get diminishing returns on working out. In a study I found, you know, link in description down below, of course, anabolic steroid users who were doing weightlifting managed to gain four and a half to 11 pounds of muscle in under 10 weeks, which is about half a pound to a pound per week using steroids. Now I'm assuming these steroid users are cycling on and off of these steroids all the time. So assuming that they're using steroids and bulking half of the year, which means they can gain about 13 to 26 pounds of lean muscle mass in one year, which is about equal to what our natural lifter is doing when he just starts out. As a side note, the biggest gainer in that steroid study managed to gain 15 and a half pounds of muscle in only six weeks, which works out to something like 2.6 pounds a week. That's, that's like, mind blowing right there. All right, myth number five is that if you're not making gains, you're not working out hard enough and you're not taking your diet seriously. The fact of the matter is that a guy who's 20 years old with high testosterone is going to see a lot more gains with the same workout plan and the same diet versus a guy who's 40 years old or has lower testosterone. He's still gonna benefit from the diet and workout plan, but not nearly to the extent that the other guy will. And I know this is the point in the video where the bro science guys are gonna jump all over me and be like, oh, you're a pussy, you're making excuses, you don't know what you're talking about, all you gotta do to get more gains is just lift more and you gotta eat more, lift more, eat more, lift more, eat more, and then you're just gonna get like, yeah, you're gonna get there. And if you don't, just lift more, eat more, more. Okay, for the people who honestly think that, I want you to go to your gym, find the biggest, buffest, baddest guy in the whole gym and watch his workout routine, okay? Just go sit down and watch his workout routine. And I can pretty much guarantee from personal experience that he's gonna be talking to his friends at the gym or sitting on his phone. He is not gonna be working out any harder than anybody else in that gym. The hardest working guy in that gym is probably the nerd over in the corner with the video game t-shirt with his face all red just going like, woo! He's probably barely worked out a day in his life before, but kudos to him for being there and putting in the effort, you know? That's the guy who's working out hard. Your genetics and hormones are beyond your control, and I see things like testosterone replacement therapy as simply being a tool that you can use to control things that you otherwise couldn't. I mean, if your body's not making lots of testosterone, that's just part of life. It's not your fault, it's not your choice, and other lifters shouldn't be calling you a pussy because you wanna do something to change it. You can't force your body to build muscle no matter how many calories you eat. Like diabetics, for example. They're diabetics because their pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin, so they need to get artificial insulin from an external source. You don't see bro guys going around making fun of them being like, oh man, I have an all natural pancreas. All natural insulin, man. You're a pussy ass bitch and a quitter for not having a pancreas like mine. I got a real man's pancreas. The real man pancreas right here, son. That's just silly. All right, moving right along. Myth number six. 
running is bad for your knees. Now for the longest time I believed this was true until I started doing research for this video. It turns out that running actually decreases your risk of arthritis. Obviously being a runner puts you at greater risk of injury, but it's still good for your joints rather than harmful like most people think. Now the seventh and final myth, we're finally there. You should work out your abs every day. Now I thought this one was really silly, but I still hear people talk about it in the gym. Your abs are like any other muscle group, like your biceps or your pecs. You work them out, then you give them 48 hours to rest, then go back and do it again. Your abs are no different. Your abs need time to rest, like any other muscle group in your body. Working out your core two to three times a week is plenty for it. You don't need to do it every day. And if you're one of those guys that thinks he needs to do 500 crunches every day for whatever reason, you're gonna make one part of your abs way stronger than other parts of your abs, which is gonna cause an imbalance. It's not gonna look aesthetic and it's not gonna give you the results you wanna see. When you're cycling between your muscle groups on different days, just put a day or two in there where you can be dedicated to working out your core. Whew, that's it. That took uh, a lot longer than I thought. Why am I even looking at my wrist? I don't have a watch. Hold up, Apple Watch, Series 4, just got it. Still figuring out what on earth I'm supposed to do with this thing. Honestly, it doesn't seem very useful so far, but uh, we'll think of something for me to use it for other than that my phone couldn't already do for me. All right, like and subscribe, guys. I'll see you in the next video, but I am done here today. Peace out.